In this part of our SEO8 Max Improvement Series, I'm showing you a complete chamber heating solution, the eye heater, and taking you through the entire process of preparing our printer for reliably printing high temp filaments. This huge build chamber now heats to 60 Celsius in just 10 minutes. We'll print the components, install clipper, configure the macros for dual heater setup, design a clean mounting solution to secure the heaters to the roof and have a lot of fun with our 3D printers along the way, so stick around. I'm Gergo and this is my YouTube channel, Gergo Print 3D, where I test, review and improve 3D printers and laser devices. Just like our earlier videos, this one has curated translation ready subtitles, chapter markers and audio tracks in more than 20 languages now. This is the fourth video of my SU8 Max improvement series and our seventh video about the Max overall. And I can promise you it's not the last. As we were testing the eye dryer, I noticed that Ruslan, its creator, also offered chamber heating solutions, something our enclosed Max very much needed. He was actually very kind to send us two kits to test. Yes, two. According to the calculator on his website, a single 200 watt heater would only get this chamber to about 40 C. For such a massive enclosed volume, and remember mine is even extended upwards with this riser, we'll need two heaters working in tandem to reach our target of 60 C and over. The eye heater kits, all components, but not the 3D printable parts, are shipped from China and they arrived incredibly quickly in about a week. By then, I had already started printing the cases. Now, I couldn't use my SVO8 Max for this task, this being the very project to make it ready for high temp filaments. The cases need to be temperature resistant. So I used this inexpensive King Rune ASA we got from AliExpress a while back. I'm very happy with this option. It prints great with little smell and I'll leave a link to it below. The parts fit perfectly on the build plate of our GD Tech T1 Pro, which was actually our first printer with chamber heating. They printed okay. Then I reprinted the two color covers on the new Bamboo H2S, thanks to its material changer. My initial struggles with the bad adhesion were shown in this recent video. The H2S is able to heat its chamber to 60-65 degrees, where we don't need any glue or even brims around the parts. This makes me very excited about our Max getting the same upgrade. If you've seen that video, you know we also printed new tool head covers to prepare for these elevated chamber temperatures. The tool head MCU of the Max tends to heat up 20, 30 degrees over its surroundings, which is fine when printing PLA or PTG, but with a 60C chamber, the tool head electronics would be cooking near 100 degrees. I printed 3D Print Demon's one-piece design out of a highly heat-resistant but very affordable Eerie One ASACF I found on AliExpress and popped in a 3010 fan I got for about $3. If you splice it in with the extruder fan, it will turn on automatically whenever the nozzle goes over 40C, thanks to improved macros in Demon Clipper Essentials, which I highly recommend. All right, let's get these assembled. The first challenge was the KDS9700 ceramic thermo switch. It didn't fit into the case I printed. It turns out Ruslan has already updated the design to fix this, but I just used my auto rotary tool to carve out some space. This rotary tool is also part of the snap block system. Highly recommended. If you get them for yourself or as a gift, make sure to use my coupon GERGO15. For the fan, make sure to rotate it slightly so its sides are actually not parallel with the walls. You'll see it will snap in place. The main thermistor needs to be carefully pushed between the grills of the heating element. And don't forget the little spacer screws 
use them for any part that directly touches the heater, both in the case and in the cover. After completing the internal wiring, we can add these clever little Padgy light pipes. I use the transparent GTEC Padgy we got a while back. They channel the light from the internal indicator LEDs to the outside of the cover. It's a neat touch. Don't attach the cover just yet though. We need access to the internal buttons for the setup. The external wiring is simple. Power, USB and the chamber thermistor. The socket closer to the USB port. The other one is for lockdown printers where the eye heater is not allowed to interact with clipper. Not the case with our open source Sovos. Since we have two units, I'm using a simple USB hub and a power strip from AliExpress to connect everything. Now for the brains of the operation, flashing a bare bones installation of clipper. This process turns the eye heaters into intelligent peripherals for our printer. It will be fully integrated into the clipper screen and the main sail interface. You need a Linux machine for this. No worries though, I don't have one either, but all our Sovo printers are open access Linux computers. We just need to SSH into our SVO8 Max and it can do the job for us. We put the first eye heater board into bootloader mode by holding down the boot button while pressing and releasing the reset button. Now we can flash catapult, which I learned is the bootloader. By the way, the whole process is written in Ruslan's manual on the iDryer.org webpage. I'm following the steps there. You might see a get status error pop up. But don't worry about it. I did a few retries until I realized flashing was still successful even with this error. Just hit the reset button again to exit programming mode, reboot the printer, and you will see the temporary catapult serial ID appear. Next, we need to prepare the clipper firmware. We don't need to download it because it's already included in our SEO8. But here's a crucial step for the dual heater setup. I had to specify my own unique USB IDs before compilation because both of my boards arrived with identical hardware IDs, preventing Clipper from telling them apart. Once that's in the config, we put the unit into programming mode by holding mode button this time and pressing and releasing RST. Then we can flash Clipper with these commands. All done. Well, almost. Now we have to repeat the exact same process for the second unit using a different unique ID, of course. Then we can get rid of the temporary catapult directory on our printer just to free up some space. With both units flashed, it's time to configure the software. I was a bit puzzled at first about how to control two heaters. The provided macros only worked with a single eye heater. I ended up updating that macro so that it treats the two units as separate heaters, but controls them in tandem to reach a single chamber temperature target. I even added LED control logic. The leftmost LED indicating fan status. The center lights up when a target temperature is set, while the third light shows heater activity. You can find my dual heater macro, 2xiheater.cfg, in the description, and I will soon add it to GitHub as well. Just add the serial IDs, which you made sure to be different, and adjust the max temperatures based on the material you used for the printed cases. The Kingrun ASA I used is rated for 105C, but to keep a safe margin, I set my heater max to 90C. Time for a quick test. Still outside the printer, but I can run the eye heater on macro specifying the target temperature. The fans spin and things get toasty. Pressing the button on either unit now runs the eye heater off macro, which is a practical safety feature. We can also use the standard G code commands M141 to set the chamber temperature and M191 
to set and wait for it. So where do we put them? My first thought was somewhere in the middle. It's not really possible since it would be in the way of the gantry, but I still wanted to try. So for the time being, I put them on the back gantry and tested. It gave us 60C in about 20 minutes. Not bad, but this placement would need us to cut holes on the side panels and move them outside. Not ideal. Below the gantry, they are too big. In place of the stock chamber fans in the back, they don't really fit there either. Besides, I wanted to keep those fans. I then tried a temporary attachment, just for testing, to the roof. We have plenty of space up there, thanks to my 150 mm riser. I can't say this was a foresight on my part to make the riser so much taller. Actually, adding just a 100 mm would have been enough. I just like to leave room for unexpected things, and this was very fortunate this time. Because the results were spectacular. Look, 60C in just 10 minutes. This is the spot. Now, before I show you the permanent and clean mounting solution I designed, if you're finding this guide helpful, it would be a huge help to the channel if you hit that like button. And if you want to see where we take this beast next, make sure you're subscribed because we have so many more upgrades planned. All right, for the permanent mount, I designed these removable mounting grips with integrated cable channels in Fusion 360. This also requires reprinting the Z3 column of my riser with a hole for the wires to pass through. King Rune ASA. I promise these are the last high temp parts for the Max that I print on a different printer. But I had to test the new BQ Cairo Grip Glacier smooth plate I got from AliExpress. They are also available for the regular size SEO8. Not for the Max, at least not yet. Both the ABS mounting grips and the updated Z3 column printed from the same black King Rune ASA stuck incredibly well during the print and then popped off effortlessly once the plate cooled. I did, however, print the long 490 millimeter cable channel on my SVO8 Max itself. I couldn't print it anywhere else using Sovol PETG and a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And just like the long pieces of the riser, don't forget to upscale it by the shrinkage of your filament. Each of the four mounting grips needs four or five M3 OD 4.5 heat set inserts, depending on whether you want to prepare for the optional retaining bar to be added later. You also need to extend one of the thermistor wires by 0.6 meters for a total of 1.6 meters. But the 1.5 meter power and 1 meter USB cable should be just long enough. The screws, inserts, the staff press, and hey, even the soldering kit can all be sourced from AliExpress. I put links to everything in the description. Installation requires drilling eight holes in the top panel to fasten the grips. After that, you can easily add or remove the eye heaters and the cable channel just by sliding them into place. The mounting system also features a clever sliding interlock to keep everything perfectly secure. To organize the wiring, first thread all the cables, the extended thermistor, both power cords and USBs through the new hole in the Z3 column and use the half plug to hold them in place. Next, wrap the shorter thermistor wire and USB cable through the channel to the right heater, leaving about five centimeter of slack at the end. Then run the longer cables for the left heater, leaving 12 centimeters for the thermistor, nine centimeters for the USB and 21 centimeters for the power cord. Here's a pro tip, use some captain tape or heat resistant sticky tack inside the channel to hold the wires down. This will make it much easier when you flip the channel over in the next step. 
Now we can slide in the eye heaters. The interlocking system is pretty neat. You can tell I'm quite proud of it. The tabs on the cable channel can only slide under the mounting grips when the heater boxes are pushed back. Moving the heater boxes forward secures the tabs, locking the cable channel in place. But once the power cords are connected, the heaters can no longer move backwards, fully locking the system together. Carefully flip the top panel over and fasten it back in place with the original screws. Finally, let's place the thermistors. Wrap the shorter one along the PTFE tube to the center of the gantry. The other thermistor goes into the hole in the middle of the back panel. Guide it through the printed little plug and then lock it in place with a small M2 screw or a printed peg. A quick warning here, make sure the thermistor doesn't stick out too far, otherwise it could interfere with the gantry. I have a feeling that hole was originally intended for Sovo's own chamber thermistor, which hasn't yet made it to production. Speaking of those small but essential printed parts, there's one more you definitely want to reprint, the PTFE tube clamps. The stock PLA ones in my beta unit at least, started melting once the chamber hit 60C. So you want to reprint them out of a heat resistant filament. With that final piece ready, everything is looking great. To manage the external cables, I'm securing the power strip to the fan with a zip tie. For the USB hub, I'm using double-sided tape to attach it to the back column. This is the perfect spot since that column stays much cooler than the back panel. All that's left is to plug in the power and USB cables and we are ready to rock. And there you have it, a fully integrated, powerful and cleanly installed dual eye heater setup, turning our SVO8 Max into a high performance machine ready for ASA, ABS, nylon and beyond. Hitting a stable 60C in just 10 minutes is a massive upgrade and unlocks a whole new world of materials for this giant printer. I often get asked how you can support the channel and first off, just by liking this video and subscribing, you are already helping a ton and it means the world to us. For those of you who'd like to do even more, we also have a coffee page where you can buy me a coffee or join the sustaining members. You can find the link for that in the description of all our videos. Now, if you missed the first parts of our Max upgrade series, you can watch them right here. And if you're planning to print high temperature filaments, the 100C eye dryer is your best friend. We explore it with Igor from MyTechFun in this video. Now with your fully heated SU8 Max, it's time to go print 3D. Thank you for watching another Gago Print 3D video all the way to its end. Now go make it hotter.